Jay and today I'm here with my December wrap up for 2017. I read a total of 10 books this month but I'm going to be splitting it into two separate videos because one is going to be like my Cramathon wrap up video so in this video I'm only going to talk about five books and then in my Cramathon wrap up video I'm also going to talk about five books. So without further ado let us get started. So the first book that I read for the month of December is definitely my favorite out of this month for sure and it is Girls Made of Snow and Glass by Melissa Bashardos. This is a Snow White and the Evil Queen retelling and I absolutely adored it. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Fairy tale retellings are one of my favorite genres so I was very very excited to get my hands on this book. I really liked the relationship between Mina and Lynette and how it grew throughout the story and how it wasn't your typical Evil Queen hates Snow White. It was a very unique twist on the classic tale which I definitely enjoy. I really liked how all the characters in the book were so well developed like every single side character was so well done and I really liked every single female character they were all so strong. I think that the themes of friendship and family were really well flushed out I think that the whole book was so well done and I really liked the dual perspective and how it flipped between the past and the present as well. I think that the imagery in the book was amazing like it really felt that you were in winter spring with everybody and it was just so beautiful to picture. I also really enjoyed the LGBTQIA P plus elements in the story even though it was a subplot I still really like how it was included and the ending was really well done as well. I could not have asked for a better ending. The only major complaint I had about the book which is why I gave it a 4.5 instead of a 5 stars was that at times it was very slow. Personally I like books that are more fast paced and exciting but this was more character driven and world building so it was a lot slower than what I like. But overall I really really loved this one and I would definitely recommend it to fairy tale retelling lovers because is a good one. The next book that I have is Zenith by Sasha Alsberg and Lindsay Cummings. I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars and I was sent this copy in exchange for my honest review from HarperCollins. So thank you so much to the publisher for sending me a copy. I have a full review of the book if you want to hear my full thoughts so I'm not going to go into huge detail about it. Overall I think at times it was slow and it could have been cut down a lot from the 500 pages that it is and still got the story across in an effective way. I still think it was a really entertaining read and you should all pick it up on January 16th, 2018 is when it says it's released. So go check out your local Barnes and Nobles and or chapters or Amazon or book depository, wherever you want to buy this book because it was fun. The next book I have I was also sent by the author in exchange for my honest view and it is What the Valley Knows by Heather Christie and I ended up giving this a 1 out of 5 stars. I wanted to like it but just something that happened really pissed me off in this book which I will get into. It follows a girl named Molly who's new to town and she catches the attention of a popular jock named Wade who happens to have an alcohol problem. They end up getting into a relationship and then a car accident occurs where Molly is thrown from the windshield and ends up in a coma and when she wakes up from this coma she begins to think that something tragic happened before the car accident. She can't exactly remember what it is so it's basically her trying to piece her p life back together and figure out what it was that upset her so much. So as I said I was okay with the book for the first half of it. It was decent. It wasn't anything spectacular but then a big event occurs and then I'm just gonna I'm gonna say spoilers so spoilers for this. Molly ends up being raped by somebody and then the sheriff of the town decides that it would be a great idea to tell her boyfriend Wade that she was raped and I just think that that is not handled very well because I'm pretty sure it's illegal to you know tell people something confidential that somebody told you especially if you're a police officer so I just could not get behind that and it really pissed me off so I ended up giving it a 1 out of 5 stars. I just don't think that the whole situation was handled well so it was not the book for me. The next book I have is called Before the Fall and this is by Noah Hawley and I ended up giving this a 2 out of 5 stars. It follows 11 passengers on a flight 
to New York. Ten of them are very wealthy. One is a washed up painter. The plane ride is all going according to plan until the plane ends up crashing into the ocean and only Scott Burroughs, who is the painter, and a four-year-old boy survives. And it's basically the story of the aftermath of that crash and trying to figure out if it was an accident or something planned. So I think that the book had a very interesting and intriguing premise and I was excited to read it. I thought it sounded really cool but it just ultimately fell really short for me. I found it to be super slow paced and extremely boring. I think that every character was very well developed. They all had a very unique backstory and it was interesting to see how they fit into the big picture but I just could not get behind any of them. I didn't really care what happened to them. I was just kind of reading and being like okay cool like you're you're dead. That sucks. But I wasn't invested in any of their stories. I also just really hated how the dialogue was presented in this book. It was very stilted and it just was really difficult to read in my opinion. I found myself wanting to just put the book down and be done with it but I have this thing where I can't DNF books because I have issues. So I kept reading. Overall, like, it was an okay story. It had potential, but it just couldn't hold my attention. And then the final book that I will be talking about in this wrap-up is The Luckiest Girl Alive by Jessica Knoll, and I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The book follows Ani Finelli, who is a 28-year-old who is running from her very tragic past, and she's about to marry a very wealthy businessman named Luke. She's spent the last couple of years of her life reinventing herself to become the perfect wife. She's also preparing to appear in a documentary where her secrets from her past life are going to be exposed. The book alternates from Ani's past life to her present life and at times I was very bored but then other times I was fully invested in the story. I found the first half of the book to be very boring and I contemplated just putting the book down for a while and coming back to it later but the big twist happens and I was fully invested in the story after that. I needed to know what happened next. The book is often compared to Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn which I think is not even close in my opinion. I think they're two very different stories. Personally, I hated Gone Girl and this one I didn't find that bad. A lot of people don't like this book but I found it entertaining. I don't think it was anything like blow your mind, oh my god I didn't see that coming kind of thing but it was still an enjoyable read. Alright guys, so those are the five books that I'm going to be talking about for this wrap up. If you guys are interested I'm going to have my Cramathon wrap up later on this week so check those out for the next five books that I read in the month of December. Let me know down below what you read this month and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!